What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Hamza Chimaev next UFC fight. At UFC 297, Sean Strickland and Drakus Duplessis will collide in a highly anticipated middleweight showdown. While the expectation was that Hamza Chimaev would get a crack at the winner of the Strickland vs. Duplessis fight, many still want to see him fight a top contender first. This week, Kamar Usman took to his Instagram story where he suggested that he and Chimaev run things back. The call-out caught the attention of the MMA community, with one fan indicating that he believes the pair have unfinished business. First fight should have been a draw, says a lot considering Usman only had one week notice. Five rounds full camp Usman 100% wins. Another fan wrote, Kamaru Usman deserves a rematch versus Hamza Chimaev. Full camp, five rounds. Despite that, not everyone is interested in seeing them run things back. As one fan wrote, nah, Boris was whooping his badly in a clear 10-8 first round, but he broke his hand at some point in that round, which drastically affected how he fought the rest of the fight. Healthy hands Hamzat would probably get the finish eventually in a five-rounder. Another wrote, Hamzat finished him mentally that fight. He will never be the same again after being dominated like that round one. Another fan who showed little interest in the rematch wrote, that fight, bruh. Kamaru can go fight someone else. If he wants records and accolades, with the time he has left in the sport, we'd need that title shot as soon as possible. One fan, however, wrote that the fight could serve as a true number one contender bout with a full camp. Winner fights Strickland versus DDP winner sounds like a plan. The way Chael Sonnen sees things, the UFC marketing team has dropped the ball on building up the hype surrounding Chimaev. As he explained to media members at the World MMA Awards, We've had three media darlings to Chimaev's uh, level. Chimaev himself, uh, uh, Ronda Rousey, and Conor McGregor. And so I gotta say, I mean, the marketing team, they dropped that. That, that was the hottest name out there, uh, and they weren't able to keep that going. But I do think that you could, uh, you could bring that back. With Chimaev recovering from a hand injury, it'll be interesting to see how the UFC handles his next fight. Next up, let's take a look at Israel Adesanya reacts to UFC altercation. One of the most talked about fights at UFC 296 didn't take place inside the octagon, but rather in the crowd, where middleweight champion Sean Strickland went after number one contender Dragos Duplessis. In the wake of the altercation, Israel Adesanya weighed in during a video for his YouTube channel, referencing the backlash he faced for his language during his stare down with Duplessis. At least he didn't call him a so, you know, fully respectable champions um, and title challengers, that's what they did, you know. Oh, Israel's so embarrassing as a champion goes in the cage but then you know this is what they do they they sucker punch them he actually did he jumped over the pen the the the, the chair sucker punched them and they had a little scrap but i like it i like a show sugar sean o'malley and his coach reacted to the situation in a video for youtube where the pair both laughed off the incident Josh, he's asking Gilbert's family to move. Watch. Yes, it's Gilbert's family. Before he jumps on. With Strickland and Duplessis set to collide in January, the two will have a chance to settle things sooner rather than later. Next up, let's take a look at Ian Gary threatened by UFC fighter. Although Ian Gary and Jeff Neal didn't collide at UFC 292 as originally planned, the two are now set to compete in March at UFC 299. Given the fact that Gary had previously worn a t-shirt with Neil's mugshot on it in order to build up their previous fight, it's clear that there's some bad blood between the two sides. With the rebooking recently announced, Neil spoke during a recent episode of the MMA Hour, where he threatened to punch the undefeated contender. No, it was just low class. I'm, I'm not too bent out of shape about it, you know. Um, I'm just going to punch him in the face when I see him, you know. So we, we got a date and then uh, March 7th, uh, I'm just going to beat him up. Um, but you, you felt like he had crossed the line with that? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't that bad, honestly, to me. But uh, it was just like you said in poor taste. It was it was some low class. Gary, of course, has been facing quite a bit of criticism from the MMA community, both for his relationship and for his withdrawal from UFC 296, a decision that was ultimately out of his hands. When he faces off with Neil in March, he'll be looking to keep his unblemished record intact while picking up his seventh straight UFC win. Now let's shift gears and take a look at. Tom Aspinall demands for UFC title fight next. After capturing the interim heavyweight title earlier this year by defeating Sergei Pavlovich, Tom Aspinall has made it clear that he has his sights set on fighting for the undisputed title. During a recent appearance on the True Geordie podcast, Aspinall explained why he feels as though the next logical fight would be a title unification bout. You can sugarcoat it all you want, these legacy fights and whatever. Like, my next fight has to be for the undisputed title. Why would I, like, why would it do otherwise? Like, 
it's let's find out who the guy is simple as that all this le- legacy fight I don't understand how that can happen yeah let him have a, a legacy fight but why for the undisputed title why are you making the, the rest of us wait and I understand it's John Jones mate he's a legend there's no person walking this earth who's a bigger John Jones fan than me but this isn't boxing. Of course, Dana White has made it clear that the next step is about between John Jones and Stipe Miocic when the champ is healthy enough to compete. While the booking deviates from the promotion's usual plan to have the interim champ fight the undisputed champ, White says that the Jones versus Miocic fight needs to happen. Next, let's take a look at UFC fighter reveals horrible news. Longtime UFC veteran Darren the Damage Elkins revealed some horrific news via social media this week. According to a story post made on the Longtime Vet's Instagram, a freak accident resulted in a broken leg during jujitsu, forcing him into surgery. The post read, Current situation, I snapped my tibia and fibula in my right leg by freak accident during jujitsu last night. Just got out of surgery where they put a nail in my leg. So far, it's unclear when or if Elkins will return to the octagon after the injury. As we've seen in the past, an injury of this nature requires considerable time to heal, with many fighters missing a full two years. At 39 years old, Elkins will turn 40 in May, meaning that by the time he returns, he'll likely be approaching 42 years old. Whether or not he's able to return from such a horrific injury at that age is hard to tell considering the road to recovery is a difficult one filled with uncertainties. The last time fans saw the damage inside the octagon, he picked up a submission win over TJ Brown back in October, which returned him to the win column after a December loss to Jonathan Pierce. Next, let's take a look at Daniel Cormier reacts to Leon Edwards' fight. Leon Edwards' win over Colby Covington at UFC 296 was a dominant one with the champ even going so far as to take the former interim champ down just to prove a point. While Covington struggled to get out of first gear, Edwards was able to pick him apart on the feet, battering his leg en route to a lopsided decision. Despite the dominance, Hall of Famer Daniel Cormier felt as though the performance didn't do justice to the heated rivalry. He spoke in a video for his YouTube channel where he compared the fight to other past rivalries. Right, I think Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz, I think Brock Lesnar, when he told Frank Mir he's going to shove something up, up his ass. You know, obviously, Jones and I never ended well. Um, just all those fights, lead, I mean, Jones Rashad, and it, it just kind of could be all those fights that have all that bad blood, usually they're very fun fights. They're, there's a little more to it. We didn't get, We didn't really get that. As Cormier pointed out, much of the blame lies with Covington, who fought off his back foot and failed to use his signature pace and pressure. The way Brendan Schaub sees things, Covington was already desperate heading into the fight, which was why he mentioned Edwards' dad. But when Colby went after Leon's dad, I was like, I don't like that. But th- this is my theory with that. Colby did that because his team knew Colby was not the same version that he was two years ago. In the wake of the fight, John Jones wants to gift Leon Edwards a present for beating Covington, whom he knows from his college days. While the trash talk certainly got fans invested in the fight, Michael Venom Page wasn't a fan. He shared his thoughts on the MMA Hour this week. It, the, the talk and the trash talk and the build up um, is going to be good, but but respectful. Um, what I've been seeing so far in combat sports, I hate. I don't like it. I don't like people talking about people's fathers, people's wives, people's girlfriends, people's kids, all of that kind of stuff. We need to go back to martial arts. It's mixed martial arts. Given that, don't expect MVP to lay on the trash talk ahead of his debut. Michael Page breaks silence on signing with UFC. During the previously mentioned MMA Hour appearance, Page spoke about signing with the UFC and how he came to the decision after spending the majority of his MMA career with Bellator MMA. It's more to do, as you know, the contracts are very detailed. Yeah. And it was just kind of nit- nitpicking and going back and forth with, uh, you know, contracts. Uh, but it was the, 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 it went down to the last two, which was PFL and uh, UFC. Um, but, you know, the brand of UFC is, is, is uh, just unrivaled. Um, that match with what I've managed to kind of create in my name outside of outside of UFC, I think it's just it's, it's a match made in heaven. While there had been quite a bit of speculation as to whether Page would actually sign with the UFC, as he told Ariel Helwani, it all came down to the contract he and the UFC agreed to. I said, if, if anybody sees me in the UFC, it's because I got a good deal. It's not, you know, I wouldn't, I would never have gone over and shortchanged myself in any in, in any way, shape, or form. Like it was a good deal. Um, 
and I'm, I'm, I was, I'm definitely going to be excited to be a part of the UFC, but, you know. When MVP and Kevin Holland collide at UFC 299, the fight seems poised to deliver fireworks. The MMA community goes off on Joe Rogan after his comments on Leon Edwards' performance at UFC 296. Leon Edwards, the better man, and by a significant margin in my mind tonight. Yeah, most certainly the better man, most certainly the better fighter. But what was interesting is that he made choices tonight that were not the best choices to win the fight, but almost like to prove a point. Like he chose to engage Colby in grappling in moments where he did not have to, where he could have defended and got back up to his feet. And I think that would be a better path to victory where he could have completely dominated the fight, absolutely dominated it. But he found himself on the bottom at the end of the fight, getting punched by Colby, which really didn't have to happen. Right. Uh, that's not the way you want to see a guy who's as good as Leon Edwards fight. You don't want him to, you don't want to see him make ego-based decisions when you don't have to, especially when he's so superior standing up. Here's how the MMA community reacted to it. Joe Rogan criticizing Leon Edwards about his performance is preposterous. Rogan does no crap about MMA. I've heard him say the most ridiculous, insane, and laughable things as a commentator. Leon Edwards dominated Kobe from start to finish, even out-wrestled Kobe. Joe Rogan, this is a bad look for Leon. This is what too much alpha brain will do to you. Joe Rogan hating the fact that Leon Edwards dominated Kobe Covington last night at UFC 296 is wild. He had a face like a slapped arse during the post-event wrap-up. The worrying thing is that there are millions of people who believe every word Joe Rogan and Dana White say, so Leon Edwards, using his speed and accuracy to shut down Kobe for 24 minutes, is now completely invalid. I think Joe Rogan might actually be mentally disabled. Leon Edwards stifled Covington for 24 minutes, completely shut him down, chewed up his leg and body, and in the last minute, Kobe got a takedown and suddenly Rogan was talking like Leon was coasting. Joe Rogan watching Leon Edwards drag his nuts all over Colby's face. God, what a p He's f it. Make sure to leave a comment and you might get featured in our next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss any MMA news. Check out our video from yesterday if you missed it. See you tomorrow.